All right, so this is gonna be a tutorial on how to retrofit the new climate control system, the automatic dual, whatever you wanna call it, into the old climate control system. So I have the old one, the manual one, and it only has the settings for the whole car instead of each side of the car, like the passenger and driver. So I'm gonna be retrofitting the dual climate control. So it's not as simple as everyone just thinks, which is you can't just replace this and that's it. You have to do a whole lot of other stuff, which includes tearing apart your entire dashboard and lifting it up. And then uh, I'm gonna be replacing the whole HVAC unit because I bought this off of eBay, it was like 200 bucks. And uh, important thing to note is, um, here is the sticker on it. You could pause the video right here just to look at the part number and all that. So it is the one that says A7. The one that's in the manual is called the, it's the A5. And the A7 has all the extra servos and doors and stuff like that. Uh, there's the servos here and the one here. And then there's one on the side here. And then it has the temperature sensor. And then uh, I think there's another servo somewhere else on it. But yeah, it has a whole bunch of extra stuff. And I have pictures. I'm going to post the pictures uh, probably in the description or something. So that way people can see the individual pictures of each one. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is drain your cooling system. So I did that. You take it to a shop and then you tell them to drain your, um, your AC condenser. So I'll just show you that real quick. Um, where where they're probably going to drain it from. So, you know, you pop the hood. And then in here, you're going to want them to drain, um, I think it's your low pressure line or your high pressure line, one of them. You're going to want them to drain this entire thing, though. And I just got that done. And then those lines run to the back in there, and then they go right there. And that's where it connects to on the outside, I believe. So that, that plug-in spot should be right there on, on there. Well, that might be an adapter or something. I'm not entirely sure considering I haven't taken the whole car apart yet. But you're also gonna need to drain some coolant too because this is going to be your, um, your hot side um, for your settings and all that because coolant runs through here once it gets warm. And then that's how you get your heat in your cars because the coolant you know, is hot and then the air blows over and that's how it gets cool. Um, I also got this custom wiring harness from this guy off the forums. His username is uh, LVL underscore up, level up, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to include him in the description as a point of contact, so that way you can get them. He's charging $350 for the wiring harnesses, and they're really nice quality. You know, he has them wrapped and everything. Uh, but the pin quality looks really good. Not entirely sure where all these pins go to. He also sends you some sort of instructions as well. But yeah, I'm gonna be probably the first person making a video on how to do this though. And then, uh, you know, you get the relays and all that stuff, all the connectors for all the different servos and all that. And then this is for the, uh, the back of the unit. I don't know where all these plugs go to, but I'm gonna figure that out as I go. Um, so the first step is you're going to want to rip apart your whole interior after you get all this stuff drained. Uh, your coolant lines, by the way, are right here. So you're going to have to drain those a little bit. Probably not too low. Probably just to the lowest point in there. Which shouldn't be much lower than, um, you know, than the rest of the car. Um, I think that, that might be your highest point. So you might be good because there is a bleed valve on here bleed port right here. So as long as you drain it below here, you should be fine. And you don't have to drain the whole car. Just if you, when you take those lines off, just be careful they don't dangle too low because they'll just drip on the floor then. But uh, the first step when it comes to taking apart your interior is, you know, you'll just pop this panel off and you just pull it off. And then there's some screws and stuff in there to take out and then, um, you have to take apart your um, your dashboard. So there's a screw in here. You take that apart, and then you can pop this off. Ah, it's hard to do. I don't think I put that screw back in. 
because I was working on a um, instrument cluster retrofit recently. So I just took this off and I don't know if I broke it. Uh, I think I'm good. So you take that off and then there's uh, two screws on the top there. And then uh, you can also uh, pull this piece off. So you have to take this off, this faceplate cover thing. And you're gonna have to take all this stuff off anyway. So you might as well just do it now. Mine I can just pop off like that. And then you just pull this off. Again, this is the way that I do it because, you know, I've done it so many times, I could just tear mine apart. Ah. And then after you get that done, you can just pull this out, you know, just like that. And then there's some wires on the back of here you'll just disconnect. And then you undo these two screws and then this whole uh, instrument cluster just pulls right out. And then you have, you know, a good amount of stuff done. Uh, I'm going to figure out how to take off the rest of this stuff, but I believe you have to take off these knee pads on the side here. I think they just pop off. I think you have to undo these screws. And then I think there's some other screws behind, behind here that you have to undo as well somewhere. I'm not entirely sure because I've never taken them off before. But um, you also have to take off your A-pillar um, pieces. So on both sides, um, I'm not entirely sure what else you have to take off just to get there. I'm going to take the head unit out and all that and just unplug it. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to work on that and I will meet you guys right back. All right, so, so far all I removed was, you know, all that other stuff that I said before. Uh, there was a screw in the back of here that I removed. Uh, I removed the head unit. I removed these two screws. Uh, I taped up all of the wires for my head unit just so that way I know which ones go to the head unit so I don't get confused later. I don't really see how I could get confused considering I could remember where all these went for the most part. And then after that, uh, you're going to want to take up the center console as well. You have to. And then uh, there's a few more hidden screws and stuff. And then uh, I will meet you guys right back again. All right, taking the center console out is really simple. There's just two screws here, two screws here, and then there's two uh, 10 millimeter bolts right here. And then to pop out the centerpiece, you literally just like, you'll stick your hand in like the leather part or whatever, and then you'll just pull it up. And then there's a connector on it. Uh, there's, if you have the heated seats, I put these in myself, um, but if you have heated seats, there's these two connectors that you just got to disconnect when you pull it up. And then there's a the connector for the 12 volt. And then I believe that's everything. You also have to disconnect the one for the little um, junk tray thing, whatever you want to call it. And then you also take off these uh, little uh, pieces on the side. They're like long pieces on either side. Take those off too. And then you should just be able to pull this up like once you're done, once you have everything disconnected. And then, yeah. All right, so all I did next was I took off the um, A-pillars, and then I took that one off too, and then I took off the speaker covers as well. I don't know if you have to take speaker covers off, but I'm pretty sure you do. And then it looks like there's a screw underneath here, and then there's also one on that side too. And then um, another thing too, when you're taking off, if you have A-pillar a cluster gauges or whatever, uh, I'd highly recommend labeling which each one is. I have a fancy label maker but uh yeah i have a label maker and i'm just putting these big ass labels on here uh you could you could do it a different way though you could just make one like yellow one red and one like black electrical tape or something and then you could just take a picture and write which each one is or something but then after that i'm gonna just start undoing basically every single screw that i see uh i think i have all these done on here i don't know if there's any hidden ones it feels like there's something hidden here other than that or it's just stuck on here um i'm gonna take the glove box out as well and then i think there's a bunch of screws in here that i need to look for i'll try and find them and i'm trying to do as many updates as i can so that way you guys aren't completely in the dark it looks like there's two screws right here which i think takes out uh this whole piece i think this just pops out i'm guessing i'm not entirely sure Okay, so it is literally just those two screws, and then you just pull the whole thing out. It's pretty easy. All right, so there's more screws that you want to remove. So you want to remove this side piece, and then there's a screw under there. There's that screw up there. There's one screw in here, 
And then it looks like there are one, two, three, four, five, six screws in here. And then I don't see any down below. Oh, here's another one. Seven, looks like. Yeah, and then uh, the other side, there's uh, one here, and then there's also one here. So on, on that side, there's two, and then there's the one up top that I removed. And then there's also one down below here because you're gonna have to remove this piece under the steering wheel. I don't think you have to remove the steering wheel, but I'll figure that out as I go along. And then apparently these, um, these knee pads just pull right out. I haven't tried. Oh, okay, that was pretty easy. And then I think there's two screws. There's one here, and then there's one on the other side, and then this whole piece should just come right out. All right, I'm just recording this just so you can see what wires or what connectors go where on the, the manual one. So there's a gray connector on the left and then a white one on the right and then a big white one in the middle. And then there's uh, these little like, they look like two prongers. Yeah, they're like, oh, wow, sick. Well, that's broken. Huh, well, that's cool. I bet you this one's broken too because my lights actually went out on it. And uh, I bet you those are for the illuminator wires just to have the, the color or whatever. But yeah, that's kind of neat. But yeah, I'm taking this off. And then uh, I also took all the remaining screws out everywhere else. And then this piece, once you take the screw off on the bottom and the screw off on the side, it literally just pulls out. And then all you have to undo is these two clips right here. And then you could take this whole piece off. And I believe you do have to drop the steering wheel down um, so I think you have to take off, uh, this piece and then this top piece, maybe I'm not entirely sure. And then I think you have to undo the mounts for the steering wheel, which I don't remember where they are. I think they're in the back somewhere or this, these might be it. I'm not too sure, but I'll get there when I get there. But yeah. All right. So I just took off the cover thing here. So if you want to take this off without taking the steering wheel off, you could literally just turn the steering wheel um to where the top is on the side and then you could get this black screw on the side here and then you could turn it the other way and then get the black screw in here and then this just pops off and then the bottom piece just pops off too and there's also another screw that's hidden right here uh someone else also does have a tutorial on how to take the whole dashboard apart uh i believe i have to take the speakers off next though all right so there's one screw behind the obd port uh it's like on the back of it and you just have to take that one off and then there's a screw up here it's like in this hole and then there's one on the other side in the same spot and then i undid the speakers too but uh i think there's just like a few more screws and clips and all that kind of stuff it feels pretty loose i just need to find where the last couple spots are and then there's like this in here where there's like clips or something on there so i'm gonna have to figure that out but I think for the most part, I have everything off and I'm just gonna double check to make sure and then see if maybe I can take it off. All right, so I found an easier way to take it off. So uh, if you just push out, if you just push a clip on the side of the OBD port, it just comes right out and then you don't even have to undo this screw. There's also a screw right here that you don't have to undo. And then all you have to undo is this uh, nut right here in terms of like the extra stuff. But yeah, it's it's pretty easy once you do that. Uh, you just have to really yank on this like really hard. Like those clips are like really, really in there. And I had to pull the fucking shit out of it. And then uh, after that, there's the 12 volt plug in, in the back here. And you just have to disconnect the wire on. And then this should just pull right out. Uh, I had my heater, my seat heated wire or whatever. Uh, I ran it through here and then I ran it like through this piece right here so i had to cut it so that way i could just reroute it and then yeah hopefully that'll be good maybe while i'm here i'm gonna just reorganize some of the wiring that i did but yeah all right after i removed everything uh you gotta undo these two bolts here for the passenger airbag and then this clip all you have to do to undo this clip is you just pull on this black piece towards you and then it should just pull out then after that, you should be good to remove the entire dashboard. Uh, the speakers, I'm just going to feed them through because I, I soldered them in directly when I replaced them. So I'm just going to feed them through instead of unclip them if I can. 
Oh no, I did. I did do a clip. Never mind. I'm just gonna unclip them. Yeah, I'm good. But yeah, and then uh, this wire, you just have to pull it out of here. Uh, there's like a little mount hole that it goes in, and all you do is pull it out. But yeah, and then after that, you're good to just yank off your entire dashboard.